Hello, everybody, and welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Darren. You can beam anywhere and everywhere around the world. It's about drop down menu. Google hit with more than 20,000 yep. geofence warrants from this $49 malware. Oh. What? Malware. Mal. <laughs> so but again, is. iCloud is not an encrypted environment yeah, anyway, I know. I know. so. Do they use lasers? No. They were able to open the person's computer that was protected by Windows Hello. Well, the beginning said, no, we weren't breached. And then a couple days later, yeah, we were, we were breached. breached. Straight up. It needs first. to be like. Stand straight up. It's right here. <laughs> See, I'm standing straight up. He's, you know, he's a little taller. I need, an, than I need I. an extra. Do you want to make sure your significant other doesn't know where you're shopping, what gifts you're going to get? Buy the Faraday Pocket. <laughs> An effective malware affecting Mac and PC, Discord being used to spread viruses, and fake Windows 11 installs are making their way among the internet. Will allow an identity thief what they need to get a credit card under your name. Oh, you lost somebody else had your phone? Oh, who was that somebody else? It got stolen. I just need to talk to him. I was at the gym and it got stolen on my locker, which is a common thing that happens. Right. Oh, and how come you have it on you now? I kind of feel like a, 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 a the old old style uh, news. Hi, Darren with CKDA here. Just thought it's right. How the Bumble dating app revealed any user's exact location. Oh, oh, I better delete it off my phone. I'm joking. I don't have Bumble. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, if I'm a criminal. Next one. Uh, Zoom has made. Right, Zoom Z double O M box three five O Boston Mass. Oh, you were dressed up like a dinosaur yesterday. That was a personal project, but yes. <laughs> if you, you're trackable, right? You're trackable. Everyone walk around with a Faraday pocket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, that would be a great invention where you now invent pants that have Faraday pockets built right into them. Yeah. Good afternoon, Dr. Court. How you brought yourself to where you are today? Wanting to be generous and accommodating. Work with young people. We decided to do some background research on these three major mobile ISPs, what's clearly prohibited and could in fact be a violation of their t terms of service. We thought this would be an opportunity to create a video about general buying and selling safety tips on the internet created a version two that they call the Dunashi Scholar, and which is specifically designed for you about a new mobile phone that was on the market called the Wise Phone. Hello everybody, and welcome to Unanswered Questions. Sometimes we just don't get enough time to answer all the amazing questions from students mm -hmm. during our live broadcast. Recent bug in Meta, Facebook, and Instagram proves you cannot always trust a password. AI cybercrime is happening right now and is likely going to be happening more. We wish to recognize these extraordinary and outstanding people by presenting them with the White Hatter Medallion.
Okay, and here we go. Three, two. Hey everybody, Darren with the White Hatter team and welcome to tonight's live virtual event. And the topic tonight is, are you thinking about getting your child a cell phone for Christmas? Here's some of our recommendations. Let's get after it. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Darren with the White Hatter team. And again, welcome to this live event. And before we get going, a lot of people think this is recorded. It's not to prove to you it's live. Here's the weather in Victoria right now. We're sitting at uh, three degrees here in Victoria, a little chillier than normal. But uh, I just want to thank everybody who's attending today. Here's a little bit of applause here, but some hearts just to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen to some old guy who usually wears a white hat, who's now wearing a uh, Santa's hat to talk about a very important topic. So thank you for attending. So tonight's live event, we're gonna be talking about, you know, if you are considering getting your child a cell phone this Christmas, there's some recommendations we're gonna to make to you because like it or not, this is a big decision as you're gonna see. But before we get going, a couple of caveats right up front. Number one, um, all the phones that we're going to be recommending tonight, I think it's really important that you all know that we are taking no financial kickback or anything else from any of these companies. Other than the companies providing us with the phone so that we could honestly and openly test and evaluate them, other than that, we are taking absolutely no financial kickbacks or anything else from these companies. The second thing I want to bring to your attention is every one of the devices we're going to talk about tonight, we've tested them here in Canada on our networks, both the Rogers network and the Fido's network. So it's really important that you know that they all work. And this is important because there are some other social media uh, advocates here in our country who have said that these phones do not work in Canada, which absolutely blows me away. It tells me They've never got the phone to test it because we've tested every one of the devices we're going to talk about and they definitely work here in Canada, especially on the Rogers and Fido network. The third comment I want to share is that we are privacy hawks here at the White Hatter. So we take privacy seriously, especially when it comes to our kids and the information that technology can collect from kids and what these companies are doing with that, 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 that information, that metadata. So we looked really hard at all the privacy statements of every one of these products because we wanted to make sure that if we're recommending a product that they're fulfilling best practices when it comes to privacy. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Um, I also want you to know that there are full product reviews on every product we're talking about. So this live event, it's kind of like a quick hit, right? I'm gonna be talking about these things very quickly. However, if you wanna get a deeper understanding about these products, we've done product reviews on all of these, the good and the bad. And we're gonna provide you with links. In fact, you're gonna see links to everything we're talking about in today's presentation in the notes in on the YouTube channel uh, if you're following us on YouTube. And the, for those of you that are following us on Facebook right now, I will be putting those online here in a little bit after the presentation. And our goal here is to provide you with the best information possible so that you can make an informed decision as a parent or a caregiver when it comes to purchasing and gifting the appropriate phone to your child. And any questions you may have on anything that we're gonna be talking about today, just plop them in the comments box, either on Facebook or on YouTube. And then at the end of the presentation, we're gonna answer any questions or comments that you may have. So before we get going, I just wanna kind of bring some statistics, some realistic numbers to the game here. And Media Smarts Canada, which is, it's a not-for-profit, it's a national organization here in, in Canada that, uh, that teaches uh, in the areas of digital literacy and internet safety, did that, they did some research recently on kids and cell phones. And here's some interesting facts in Canada. 57% of youth between nine to 11 years of age, they found had some kind of a smartphone. 81% of youth between 12 to 13 had some form of a smartphone. And 93% of youth in Canada between ages of 14 to 17 had a cell phone. And I can tell you that this is fairly well replicated in the United States. So although we're a Canadian company, everything that we're gonna be talking about today applies to both Canada and the United States. I'll be putting more emphasis on Canadians, however, but everything I'm gonna talk about can be purchased in the United States as well. Now, speaking from about the United States, the Pew Research Center in the United States did some research on this very topic as well. And I wanna blow this one up because this will kind of be shocking, I think, to some of you. You know, the narrative that youth are badgering their parents for their first cell phone is not necessarily factually correct. What they found was that youth are getting their first cell phones because parents and caregivers want to keep in touch with them. That's the reason why these kids are getting their first cell phones. And because of that fact, probably the number one question we get from parents when we're doing our parent presentation is, 
what age should kids be getting their first cell phones? And you know what? I get it. Like, this is a well-meaning question. It really is. However, it's really not about the age. It's about their social and emotional maturity to operate a phone without parental supervision. Really, that's what it's all about. And especially true if they're struggling with conflict, have poor impulse control, and can't honor boundaries. And this is important. And, you know, age shouldn't be a, a, an issue here because I'll be honest with you. I've met some 18-year-old teens, young adults, who've got the maturity level of a 13-year-old. And we've met some 13-year-old youth in our country who've got the maturity level of an 18-year-old. So really, it shouldn't be about age. And in fact, one of our favorite researchers in the United States, Dr. Devorah Hetner, a lot of respect for her. She's also a digital literacy and internet presenter in the United States. She said, you know what? Rather than thinking about age, let's consider independence milestones. So if your child can click one of these boxes, one or more of these boxes, it's basically telling you as a parent that they're probably ready for their first phone. So here, is her, here are some of her milestones. Can they make lunch without your help? Are they walking home from school alone over a vast distance? Are they uh, spending brief time home alone? Uh, are they babysitting? And this one's really important. Why? Because a lot of, when you go to babysit, a lot of families today, parents, they don't have landlines. They all have cell phones. So when they leave the home to do what it is they're doing, they're bringing their phones with them, which means that your child, the babysitter is at home without a phone, meaning they need one in case there's an emergency. So that's another milestone that you might want to think about. Uh, uh, riding public or riding, sorry, riding, riding public transit independently and organized with homework. The, those are some milestones. Another doctor, Dr. Natasha Burdett, she's a, pedi a pediat pediatrician in the United States. And here's some of her milestones, which include the ability for complex thoughts and improved reasoning, developing their own solutions, showing signs of empathy, strong sense of right from wrong, responding to appropriate limits and boundaries, and improved communication for wants and needs. Those are some of their milestones. But when it comes to phones, I want you to know that there are two categories of phones that we kind of identify here at the White Hatter. And the first category is what we call fusion phones. I'm going to blow this one up for you. And fusion phones are iPhones and Android phones and other the all the other big players in the industry. And what I want you to know about iPhones and Android phones or what we call fusion phones. And the reason we call them fusion phones is because they can do a variety of different things, right? Like they can fuse, you know, being a phone to a text, to watching movies, to listening to music. They can do all kinds shoot movies. I mean, they can do all kinds of things. That's why we call these things fusion phones. But here's what I want you to know about these phones. They're like Ferraris. And what do I mean by that? Well, they were built and designed for adults. You know, when these iPhones and Androids are developed and created, they're not created for kids. They're created based upon and designed for adults. Yeah, a lot of these, these fusion phones have you know, family um, uh, software on here where you can set it up for child controls and that kind of stuff. But some of you are probably experiencing that even when you set up those 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 filters, kids are bypassing them. In fact, there's YouTube channels showing the kids how to do that. And one of the things I say about these fusion phones, it's like throwing your kids the digital keys to the digital highway. Like, would we ever toss our, ki our keys to our brand new Corvette that we just bought to our kid and without any driver training and say, here are the keys, go have a good time? No, we would never do that because they would probably get in all kinds of trouble, including serious accidents. Well, our opinion is when it comes to these fusion phones, we're kind of doing the same thing. Now, obviously, there are going to be some exceptions to that rule, right? So a really good exception to that rule. What about teens or youth that have type 1 diabetes, right? Like there's some really good apps on the market right now that can go onto these fusion phones, these smartphones that are designed to help teens, youth, even adults with type 1 diabetes to stay healthier, to reduce health risks to them. So there might be one of the exceptions. But the second phone I want to bring to your attention is what we call minimalist phones. I'm going to blow this one up big screen. And I want you to think of a minimalist phone kind of like a go-kart or a push cart or a bike with training wheels. Really, what these minimalist phones are, in our opinion, they are better suited as first phones for younger kids, as you're going to see. And some of these minimalist phones that we're going to recommend include things like the TikTok 4, not the same as TikTok the app, the Orchid phone, the Ghost phone, the Wise phone, and the Pinwheel phone are, are kind of the four that we're going to talk about. So the first phone I want to bring to your attention, it's not really a phone, it's a smarter watch. 
it's not a smartwatch. So it's not like an iWatch or a Google Watch because basically what they are is they're like mini cell phones on your wrist, right? Like these are smarter watches. These are watches that were specifically designed for kids. And what's really kind of cool about these types of watches is they're kind of geared in our opinion for students who are in about grade three and under. So they're really designed for the younger youth in your family. And what's really cool about these watches is that it allows a parent to talk, text, and if needed in an emergency, figure out where your child is. So it actually uses a SIM card, much like your cell phone, and allows you to talk to your child either through voice or you can kind of actually video them as well, kind of like FaceTime with Apple where you can talk to them. And what's really cool about this watch is that the parental software that's in place allows you to minimize who can phone or who can talk to your, to your child. You can prevent that from happening. And with a push of a button, if needed, you can locate where your child is. And the software also allows a parent to kind of take control of it so that during school hours, when your child's in school, they won't be able to use any of the other functions on the watch except the watch itself. So it decreases distractions. But what's really cool about this watch is it has no web browser capacity. So there's no way that the child can use their watch to access the internet, social media, online gaming, YouTube, anything like that. They just can't do it. And it has a strong privacy statement. And this is important when it comes to watches, because trust me, we've looked at a number of them right now. And the TikTok 4, which the company, by the way, is shipping us one to test. So this is one that we haven't tested yet, but we've looked at a number of reviews from other people who we highly, highly, highly respect and the strong privacy statement as well. And they're very careful about the type of information they're collecting on these watches and what they're doing with it, which we really like. And it can be purchased in Canada right Right now using a credit card because a lot of these devices you can't get them in Canada right but this one you can actually purchase it in Canada using a credit card and right now you can buy it from Best Buy online and it, right now it is at $219 Canadian to get so this is the type of device that rather than giving your, your, your child an actual phone this may be a better way to go for the younger kids so again we think about grades three and under is where this would be uh, appropriate but when it comes to phones, the first one I want to recommend is what we call the Sunbeam Orchid phone. And here it is right here. And here's what's interesting. This phone is a phone that is designed for students, in our opinion, that are in elementary school. So grades seven and below. And it is a fully functioning cell phone, right? But what they've done is they've ripped out the guts of this and they put in their own operating system. So it was built with privacy in mind. And yes, indeed, it is a flip phone. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But the beauty of this phone is, again, it has no web browser. So the child is unable to use this device to connect to the internet, social media, gaming sites, or anything like that. And there's no advertisements that will come to them from advertisers online as well, which is a huge benefit. And as well, it has tools, not apps on the phone. So what do I mean by what? Well, this phone gives the child the ability, I'm gonna turn and read this, has the ability to allow the child to text. It has a camera so you can take pictures or video, it has an alarm clock, a calculator, a calendar. You can store music on this to listen to music. It has an SOS emergency button. So if your child's in trouble and they don't know where they are by clicking it, the GPS will tell you where they're located. Um, and it's got, if you want, it's got a mapping function on it as well that is almost identical to Google Maps or Apple Apple Maps, but it uses its own proprietary software to do it, which again, it's not tracking you or selling your information. And this phone is can actually be purchased. It's, it's a US-based company, but you can order it online using a Canadian credit card, and they also ship into Canada, which is a huge benefit. And right now, you can get the Sunbeam Orchid phone for about $25. And people will say, well, yeah, but Darren, it's a flip phone. You know, kids don't like flip phones. Really? Well, what about this article that just appeared in the New York Post, right? Generation Z is flipping out over phones where, uh, where, where to buy one in or where to buy one in 2003. So what is old is new again. So again, here it is right here. This is the phone right here. Here's the phone right here. And here's what's really cool about this phone. I'm going to go with a downward angle shot. This is kind of a cool shot. This is our downward camera. So it's a flip phone, but it's it's kind of larger than most flip phones that we were used to when we were kids, right? And you open it up and it's got a fully functioning touch screen. So you can touch it and you can scroll. It's highly sensitive. It's pretty cool as to what you can do with this phone, right? And again, it can do a multiple purpose of things. And, but primarily, it allows you 
as the parent to be able to speak to your child in times of emergency if you need. But again, from a privacy standpoint, it's really, really cool. Now, the next phone I wanna to recommend to you is what we call the ghost phone. And I love this phone as well, because you know there are some students that maybe as they get a little older, because the ghost phone, we believe, is more for grade seven and up. So this is for the middle school student to the high school student. So you can graduate them up to this phone, right? And the reason we love this phone is because it looks very much like an iPhone, right? Well, it, it's, it's basically, it's an Android phone, right? That's what it is. However, it's a fully functioning cell phone. But again, what Ghost Phone, what the company Ghost Phone has done is they've ripped out the Android software in here and they put in their own operating system. It's called the Ghost Operating System. And it's designed by privacy by default. So again, it's not collecting all the dip, all the private information is you're going to see that a lot of these other phones do. So from a privacy standpoint, it's a huge benefit uh, to kids, in my opinion. And again, this phone has no web browser on it, right? So they don't have the ability to connect to the internet, social media, online gaming sites, or anything like that. And much like the Orchid, the flip phone I just shared with you, it has the ability, again, I'm going to turn and read this, you can text, it has got a camera, so you can take videos and, uh, and pictures, it has an alarm clock, it has a calculator, calculator, has a calendar. You can listen to music that you can download onto this thing. It also has an emergency location button if needed, and it also has a mapping function on it as well. And again, the beauty of this phone, this minimalist phone, is it can be purchased using a Canadian credit card, and the company, which is a US-based company, will ship into Canada, which again is a huge benefit. Now, the downside to this phone is it's expensive. It's $814 Canadian. But when you compare it to uh, a, a brand new Android phone or a brand new iPhone, it is actually a little bit cheaper or about the same price, but you don't have to worry about it connecting to the internet and social media. And from a privacy standpoint, it's not collecting anywhere near the amount of personable identifiable information about what your kids are doing online and then using it to their advantage from a sales standpoint or for selling it to third parties to their financial benefit. That's just not happening. So again, just to show you what it is, I'm going to give you a top-down view here. So here it is. It's the Android. It's basic. It's 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 an Android phone. That's what it is. It's really thin and slick, and it's like any of the other phones. You kind of scroll up, you enter your password. I'm going to hide it so you don't see it. It's not the real password that I use, anyways. But there it is. And what's really cool about this phone is that it allows you to do all kinds of things. And you can see it's it's much like every other smartphone that is out there. It's very you know it's a touch screen. You got your phone, which is kind of cool. You got uh, if you want to listen to music. Music. This is where you're going to download your music to listen to music. It's got a really cool camera on it. Uh, the, 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 the quality of this camera is unbelievable. Again, it's just a really cool phone that you can think about using uh, uh, and getting for your child other than a full functioning view, fusion phone, right? The, the Ferrari type phones. Kind of a cool phone. Now, the next one I want to recommend to you is what we call the Wise Phone. And you know what? We love the Wise Phone as well. It's very similar to the Ghost Phone, right? And in fact, here it is. In fact, it's a little bigger screen. Like the screen on it is a little bit bigger. And again, they're using basically an Android platform. It's a fully functioning cell phone, but like the Ghost Phone, they have removed all the Android software on here and they built their own operating system, which they call the Wise OS system. Again, it's designed with privacy built into it. So it's not collecting any kind of personal information that they're collecting and selling. Again, this phone has no web browser capability, so it can't connect to the internet. It doesn't connect to any kind of social media, YouTube, or anything else online. It just can't do it. And much like the other phone, it has tools on it and not apps on it. And it's basically got the same capabilities as the uh, ghost phone that I just shared with you. But here's the downside to this phone. You can't use a Canadian credit card to purchase it. This is a US-based company. So they don't accept Canadian credit cards and they don't ship into Canada. 
So one of the ways around this is if you, and we've had a couple of our followers do this with the Wise Phone. What, if they have a, if you have a friend in the United States, you can have them purchase it in the US and ship to their home. And then your friends can ship it to you up here in Canada. And then you reimburse your friend, right? Which is one of the ways around this. And yes, indeed, it works just fine up here in Canada. Like I said, we tested on both the Rogers and the Fido platforms. And it's about $814 Canadian. So again, it's very, very similar uh, to the um, uh, ghost phone that I just shared with you. And to kind of give you an idea, so again, here it is right here. It's, it works the same way. It uses more of a gray standard on the screen. So they don't use colors on the screen. It's called a gray standard. And it much like it, any other phones, you, you swipe, you can do all kinds of cool things on it. You can see there's a clock, there's a calculator, maps, notes, camera, flashlight, photos, settings. It's really cool about what it is you can do. And it's it's really, really um, touch. I mean, it's, it's just amazing what you can do with this phone. It's like any other phone that you wanna use. It's very cool as well. And again, it's not collecting a lot of personal and private information about you online. So again, another option for you to think about called the Wise Phone. Now, the last phone I wanna recommend is called the Pinwheel Phone. And here it is right here. So we have the Pinwheel. So yes, we've tested, evaluated this one as well, and it works on both the Rogers and the Fido network. And it too is basically an Android phone. And this phone is something that we recommend, again, for students who are in grades seven and above. So higher middle school in, uh, into high school level types of youth. And it's a fully functioning uh, smartphone or a uh, uh, phone, right? It's much like a smartphone, like a real Android phone, but it's a fusion phone. What they've done, much like the other phones I just shared, they ripped out the Android software and they put in their own operating system, which again is kind of built for privacy by design to a degree. And this phone also has no web browser capability. So it doesn't allow the teen to connect to the internet into social media. However, this phone through the parental app. So this one you can pair up with your parents' phone. So it gives you a little bit more control about what you can do, what you can see. So a good example on this phone and the other Wise phone that also has a parenting portal, you can turn off the camera so that they can't use the camera for whatever reason. It also allows you as a parent, there are other apps that this company has endorsed that are age appropriate. And if you want your child to get that app onto their phone, you can give them permission to do that off of your phone to download it onto this specific phone. But the downside to this phone is like the Wise phone, you can't purchase it from Canada with a Canadian credit card and they presently don't ship to Canada. So much like the Wise phone, if this is a phone that you're interested in, if you have a friend in the United States, have them pick it up for you and then have them ship it up to you and then you reimburse them. And this phone, it goes anywhere from between $274 to $814 Canadian, depending upon the phone that you want, right? Now, I must let you know that this phone does collect information on what your kids are doing online. Now, Pinwheel says that they don't sell their information to third parties, and I have no reason to doubt them whatsoever. But some of the information, I'm kind of going like, why are you collecting this information, right? So again, something to think about, but it's a phone that was uh, specifically designed for youth, uh, is something to think about. Now, we get a lot of parents asking us, well, what about the Bark phone and the Gab phone? Because they're all over the place in the United States. And they're available in the US for sure, but they are not available in Canada. They use specific network technology that only allows them to operate in the United States presently and not here in Canada whatsoever. So they, even if you purchase them in the US and you bring them up here, they're not gonna work for you up here. But one of the cautions I want to mention to all of you when it comes to a lot of these phones that are being designed for kids are some of the privacy issues associated with this. Like I said, we are privacy hawks here at the White Hatter. And one of the things that we love to do is we love to read privacy policies, which is kind of like watching paint dry to a lot of people, but it's important that we understand it. And what concerns me is with some of these phones that are being specifically designed for teens, you'll read in their privacy policies hidden deep within the policy where they say right in the policies that they collect information surrounding racial or ethnic origin or political opinions or associations or religious or philosophical beliefs or sexual orientation or even health information and like which is quite concerning to me especially like why is that important to have specifically when it comes to youth like this makes no sense to me whatsoever and a lot of these companies will say well we don't we, although we're collecting the information we don't sell it 
it to third parties, but why collect it then? It would be my opinion. But the other thing that concerns me about a lot of these companies and the information they're collecting is some of them will use it for advertising, for self-advertising to meet their financial benefits. So again, this is an issue to us here at the White Hatter. That's why the Orchid phone, the Wise phone, and the uh, Ghost phone, they don't do any of these things. They're not collecting any of this information whatsoever. So you reduce the risk substantially of information being collected that in our opinion really does not need to be connected. So one of the things that we like to say when it comes to phones is we like to say we like to take a graduated approach to phone and technology. So for youth who are pre-teens and early, early elementary schools, K1 and 2, you know, think about the more appropriate device is probably going to be that watch that we spoke about. Once they reach up into the up into elementary schools, well, then you can think about the watch or maybe the uh, Sunbeam Orchid phone, the flip phone that I was talking about would be the more appropriate watch. And then when all of a sudden they hit the middle school levels, like six, seven, and eight, maybe that's where we want to think about getting them now. Things like the Wise phone, the Ghost phone, or the Pinwheel phone. And then once they reach high school and they're showing us good digital literacy, that's when we want to then graduate them up to a fully functioning iPhone or an Android phone. So to us here at the White Hat, it's all about the right phone at the right time, not the right age, the right time, depending upon some of those criteria that the two doctors that I mentioned before kind of mentioned to be looking out for. So again, this was a quick hit on some of these phones. So to find more information and more detailed information on these phones, I would encourage you to go to our website, which is www.thewhitehatter.ca, where you can download our free web book for parents. And in chapter 11, we dedicate to smartphones. Everything parents need to know about smartphones, plus a whole lot more, where we talk about each one of these phones in greater detail, uh, if you're interested to go and have a read. And again, it's free, it costs you nothing. So again, we have the right phone, so we've picked the right phone for our kids. But the next thing that we want to do, in our opinion, is we want to combine technology with what we call a family collective agreement, the way they're going to use these phones. And we here at the White Hatter have created a free five page. Yeah, you heard me right. It's free. It costs you nothing. It's a five page collective agreement that basically outlines the acceptable use of technology, be it a cell phone, be it a computer, both inside and outside of the home. And not only does it place responsibilities on the youth, but also on the parents as well. And this kind of gives you the ability to sit down with your child and go by each point, point by point to discuss, to have these discussions with the kids, to engage with your kids about the appropriate use of technology. And again, it's something that if you're gonna give your child a phone this Christmas, you should should be pairing it up. You should be printing off this family collective agreement and putting it in a Christmas card that goes with the device. So as soon as they open up the device before they're allowed to use it, you now as a family are going to sit down and read this collective agreement together before they're allowed to use that phone for the first time. Again, something to think about. But if there's one rule I really want to emphasize that is in that family collective agreement, it is this right here. And I'm going to blow this one up big screen. We believe that bedrooms and bathrooms should be tech-free zones. Youth should not be allowed to have their technology in their bedrooms, especially at night and especially these phones, right? And primarily for two reasons, sleep issues. And we have a whole chapter in our book dedicated to that issue. But here's the other thing I can share with you. We here at the White Hatter, we've helped hundreds of families deal with issues where teens get involved in less than desirable behavior. Now, having said that, I think it's really important for parents to know that the majority of our teens online are doing super cool and creative things online. They really are. And we older adults, we need to start acknowledging that fact. However, for teens that we've helped where they found themselves in bad situations online, here's how it looks almost every single time. Teen in their bedroom at night with an internet connected device unsupervised by parents almost every single time. So we got to get these phones out of the bedrooms and not allow them into the bathrooms as well. But then you'll hear the kids go, but mom and dad, the reason why I want my cell phone in my bedroom is because it's my alarm clock. It's my alarm clock. Well, we have a fix for you. We want you to go online and we want you to look at purchasing the Sonic Bomb. You can pick it up on Amazon right now, $86 Canadian. This is 113 decibels. But here's what's really cool about this. I'm going to go over to my big screen for this. I love this. This is kind of our touch screen where we can do some really cool things, right? This is not a green screen. It's, our, it's a big touch screen. But 
this is it right here. So this is 113 decibels. When this sucker goes off, it goes off. It's got strobe lights and blinking lights all over it, but here's what's really cool. This little thing here that looks like a hockey puck, Canadians, you'll know what, I'm under, what I just said there. This thing that looks like a hockey puck, it kind of goes under the mattress. So that when the alarm goes off, what happens is that thing vibrates and it shakes. It shakes and vibrates the bed, right? I guarantee you when this thing goes off at 113 decibels and the bed is shaking at the same time, your kids are gonna wake up. So another option that you may wanna think about purchasing for Christmas. Now, you'll also get a lot of kids saying, well, mom, dad, the other reason why I want my cell phone in my bedroom is because I wanna listen to music or audiobooks." Right? Well, we got a fix for you here as well. So here's what we recommend. Instead, maybe get them an MP3 player. And here's the one that we recommend. It's called the Scan Disc. It's an eight gigabyte MP3 player. And right now you can get it online for about $64 Canadian right or the step up which is waterproof is the sport version of it that you can pick up for 115 dollars online and it's an mp3 player so the kids can download their music onto these devices to listen to them or a web book or an audiobook as well but here's what's really good these two mp3 players they do not connect to the internet you got to be careful with mp3 players that you're going to buy your kids for christmas because some of them allow your child to access the internet so if they're in their bedrooms they can still access social media they can text they can communicate they can do all other things with it these two mp3 players right here do not connect to the internet they do not have any kind of internet browser so it doesn't allow them to do that so again we've got the appropriate phone at the right time We've now combined it with the family collective agreement that we're going to sit down and talk to our kids about. Well, the next thing I want you to think about doing is maybe think about now sitting down with them and watching a video together on digital literacy and internet safety. And we here at the White Hatter, we have video on demands right on our website, right? Again, if you go to www.thewhitehatter.ca, you'll see video on demand, click on it. And you'll see that we have videos that are age specific. Right, so now your child gets their, their, uh, their minimalist phone for Christmas. You combine that with the family collective agreement where you're gonna sit down and talk about the issues, about what's, what's good, what's not good, all those types of things. We're gonna talk about no technology in the bedrooms. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit down together and watch an age appropriate video on digital literacy and internet safety. Again, it's kind of a layered or a Lego approach to keeping your kids safer when they're using technology in today's online life world. And presently, we are giving a coupon. Presently, with if you use coupon code, if you go to our website and you click on purchase and you type in coupon code HOLIDAY2023, so again, HOLIDAY2023, you'll be able to watch that video together as a family for $4.99. It's kind of like Netflix where you can rent a video. You can do it for $4.99 and you have the ability to watch it for up to 24 hours. So again, it's just another piece of the puzzle. The appropriate phone at the right time, combine that with the family collective agreement, and now we sit down and watch a video that is age appropriate for your specific teen on digital literacy and internet safety. Again, helps to build that communication. Because one of the things I can share with you, we are very much an evidence-based led company. We believe let's enlighten and not frighten through facts, not fear. So we turn to research, right? And I give a lot of credit to Brandon, who's kind of the academic in our, in our company. Brandon actually has his master's degree in the area of social media and communications. He's got his undergraduate degree in sociology with a minor in technology. He's actually my digital Yoda. I'm his digital Padawan, right? As I like to call it. He likes to laugh every time I say that. But the research shows us that there are five ingredients or what we call the special sauce. That if you engage in these five specific things as a family with your kids around technology, it's far less likely your kids are going to get involved in less than desirable behavior. So the first ingredient is age appropriate agency with technology. And that's what we talked about today, right? Like picking the appropriate phone for the appropriate developmental age of your child. So we talked about that. Two is parental modeling technology, right? Like if you're saying to your kids, don't take your phones into the bathroom and you're doing it, guess what your kids are gonna do? Or if you say don't text and drive and you're texting and driving, guess what your kids are gonna do? You know, when it comes to these devices, we parents have gotta start walking the walk and talking the talk, right? We are our kids' best role models and they will model our behavior. So when it comes to technology, we wanna model appropriate behavior, especially when it comes to these, these phones. The third ingredient is parental communication. 
get engaged with what it is that your kids are doing online because you combine that with the fourth ingredient, which is parental participation. Get involved with what your kids are doing online. You know, play some online games with them. I remember we did a presentation for a parents group and at the end of the presentation, a, a family member, um, a father came up to me and said, Darren, you really want me to sit down and play Fortnite with my kid online? I said, yeah, try it. I really don't want to, but okay. So a couple of weeks later, we get an email from this father going, hey, Darren, I'm the father you were talking to at the end about Fortnite. And I remembered him right away. He goes, you know what? I took your recommendation. I started playing Fortnite with my kid and oh my God, you're so right. Like we've never had so many uh, uh, good communication or talks about what's going on online since I've been playing Fortnite with them. In fact, I'm getting so good at it, my child doesn't want to play with me anymore. So this is why getting involved with what your kids are doing online is so important. And then the fifth ingredient to the special sauce is parental overwatch where appropriate and reasonable to do so, right? So these are kind of the five ingredients that if you combine them all together, it's going to make your kid safer in today's online life world. There's nothing we can do to keep them safe 100% of the time, right? Let, let's be honest. But there's things we can do to reduce risks. And that's what those five ingredients are all about. Because here's my big message to all of you when it comes to giving your kids technology. Remember, when it comes to online parenting, being a child's best friend often only enables less than desirable online behavior. Remember that enabling can equal damaging behavior. Be your child's best parent and not their best friend. There is a difference. Because really, it's all about setting boundaries, uh, regulating their use of technology, and being in charge. Like when we gift them these phones, we're not giving them the phones. We are lending them the phones. Like we got to start thinking about taking back, you know, a, a lot of kids think that once they get these phones, they own them, right? Entitlement. We got to start removing entitlement. Like these aren't a right to have, they're a privilege to have. And with that privilege comes some things that we expect from you. And if you don't, there could be some consequences. But the other thing I want to share with all of you as parents this Christmas season is make sure you don't get sucked into buying the wrong phone because they're free. You know, every Christmas season, these, um, these, these phone companies, they, and they come out with deals. Whereas if you sign up for a contract, you'll get a brand new iPhone or a brand new Android phone. It's free, right? And so because it's free, it really attracts us as parents. Well, I'm going to get a brand new phone and give it to my child. A lot of times it's in the, an inappropriate phone for an uh, inappropriate ready uh, teen or youth, in my opinion. Uh, again, putting a Ferrari in the hands of a, of a, of a six-year-old or a 13-year-old is, is, is not in the best interest of your child, right? But when you look deeper and you look at the fine print, the amount of money you're going to pay for signing up with a contract is going to far exceed the money you're going to spend maybe paying $800 for one of these minimalist phones that I talked about. So in the end, it's cheaper to go this way where you're going to purchase a minimalist phone with a basic tech and tech and talks plan than going with these phones that are so apparently free, but they're going to cost you a lot of money in, in the end anyways. So something to think about. So some other resources I want to share with you as, a, as parents, because that's kind of it when it comes to phones. But, you know, when it comes to learning stuff and doing stuff with your kids, we have a ton of free resources here at the White Hatter. There's our website, www.thewhitehatter.ca. You go there and you'll just see it's chock-a-block full of free information. Like we have over... 300 articles now for parents on everything that you can think about, including things like Discord, Twitch, you know, Roblox, you know, everything is there for parents and a lot of it is free. Another resource I wanted to share with all of you is our free web book. I talked about this earlier. Chapter 11 is dedicated to cell phones, right? But we, there, it's 26 different chapters and it's basically, it's a blueprint for parents and it's a web book. So it's not something you can print off, but it's something that you can read on a PC, a Mac, an iPhone, an Android, right? Or, or on a tablet. And because it's an, a web book, we evergreen it. We update it all the time. That's what's really cool. Like we were thinking about doing a written book, but we knew that once it got published, it would be out of date because things change so quickly in today's online life world. So we did a web book, which allows us to go in. So just recently, I updated a chapter on cell phones because of some of the new technology that come out that we've tested just to update it. So whenever you go into our free web book, you know you're always getting the most updated version. And I think the last update was just last month, if I'm not mistaken. Another great resource for parents is our free YouTube video. And don't forget, if you go to our YouTube video, don't forget to hit that, uh, that, that subscribe button. Hey, eh? you love the sound effects? Yeah, we got sound effects here at the White Hatter Studio as well. But again, 
just a ton of videos. In fact, we have one there where we interview experts from around the world. I think there's about 12 of them so far, 12 different categories that we talked about. And uh, everything from things like online pornography to exploitation, all kinds of stuff that we talk to experts about. And again, it's all free. It costs you nothing. And recently we, ha we have our own uh, podcast as well. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, we're being a little slow on the podcast since school started again. Uh, but I'm hoping during Christmas break that I'm going to be adding a couple more uh, important podcasts to there. And again, it's all free. And I think we're up to about 21 different podcasts at this point in time. Uh, and there will be more over the next couple of months as well. Another thing to think about is to sign up for our newsletter. You can do that right on our website and we don't spam you with our newsletter and we don't sell any of your information or provide your information to anybody, right? Our newsletter is just a way to provide those who follow us with new information or ideas or things that we may have available that you might be interested in as a company to help keep your family safer in today's online world. And probably our best resource for parents is our Facebook page. So uh, I find that a lot of parents and caregivers are still on Facebook and our Facebook is kind of our landing page for adults. So we we have, I think we're just up, we're just approaching 30,000 followers right now. Parents, caregivers, law enforcement, educators. We got thousands of teens that follow us, believe it or not, on our Facebook page as well. And our Facebook page is a place where we're constantly, almost on a daily basis, adding in new things that we think parents, caregivers, educators, law enforcement teens should know about in today's online life world. And so again, we would encourage you to sign up to our Facebook page and follow us on our Facebook page. It is absolutely free. So there you have it. I'm gonna add the snow again because we're feeling festive here at the White Hatter, right? There you have it. So the whole purpose of today's presentation was to kind of give you an understanding of the two types of phones that are out there, fusion phones and minimalist phones, and how we prefer minimalist devices as, as we believe the best first phones for a lot of youth in today's uh, world and for the reasons that we provided to you. Uh, because again, we find that when we place these, these full fusion phones, these iPhones, like we were presenting at a middle school where we saw a grade six student with an iPhone 14, like, what are we doing? Like, it's just a recipe for disaster. So providing our kids with the right devices at the right time, we think is really important, especially when we combine it with parental modeling, parental participation, communication, where appropriate parental overwatch on the use of this technology. So I'm going to go to this camera view because this is our fully robotics view. This is a fully robotic camera that's moving around, right? It's so cool what Brandon has done. Again, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. Here's some hearts for you again, just to say thank you for ending, uh, attending tonight's presentation and taking time out of your very busy day to listen to some guy wearing a Santa's hat talk about some topics that we think are important, especially this during this Christmas season. So on behalf of the entire White Hatter team, I want to thank you for attending tonight's live event and hopefully we'll see you again. If you have any questions on anything we covered, do not hesitate to connect with us online or any of our social medias, or you can send us uh, an email to contact at thewhitehatter.ca. We would be more than happy to help you. And if you're a school who's interested in bringing us in to do a live virtual presentation on digital literacy and internet safety, we have programs for elementary, middle school, and high school students. Connect with us, we can help. So on behalf of the entire White Hatter team, have a great holiday seasons, everybody. Bye from the west coast of Canada. Good afternoon, Dr. Court. How you brought yourself to where you are today? Wanting to be generous and accommodating. Work with young people. We decided to do some background research on these three major mobile ISPs, what's clearly prohibited and could in fact be a violation of their t terms of service. We thought this would be an opportunity to create a video about general buying and selling safety tips on the internet. Created a version two that they call the Dunashi Scholar, and which is specifically designed for you about a new mobile phone that was on the market called the Wise Phone. Hello everybody and welcome to Unanswered Questions. Sometimes we just don't get enough time to answer all the amazing questions from students mm. during our live broadcast. Recent bug in Meta, Facebook, and Instagram proves you cannot always trust a password. AI cybercrime is happening right now and is likely going to be happening more 
We wish to recognize these extraordinary and outstanding people by presenting them with the White Hatter Medallion.